All righty. So this is going to be a fun one. We've been kind of talking back and forth this whole week. And uh, today we're going to talk about API and EDI communication, technology, all that type of stuff. So real quick, I'll give a little background before we jump in. Steve Aborn, uh, should have said your name right away. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Uh, so API technology, which is fascinating, right? It's called the Application Programming Interface. Um, kind of young, kind of fast, sort of came out in 2000, uh, in the 2000s. So what this basically is, is a waiter, kind of if you think of it like that. Like you're the customer at the restaurant, you're ordering food off the menu, the wait, and like in theory, all you're really doing is telling the chef, go cook this for me and then bring it back to me. But you need that waiter who can constantly kind of go back and forth. And that's kind of how I've read it being described. Um, and it's interesting. It's something that like from what I understand, a lot of people, a lot of businesses, and I hear it thrown around a lot. It's, it's something that's starting to become more and more as that only way to do communication in the business world. Yeah. Now, it's interesting because there's also EDI, which is another thing we throw around, and I hear it getting exchanged a lot. And EDI is electronic data interchange. It's old but secure. And by old, it's like kind of the modern version we see of it was in the 1970s. Um, and really what it is is sort of just a secure network connection you have with another partner, another business yeah. saying, hey, I'm going to give you this data and it's going to go back. Now, why I found kind of because I hear it get, gets thrown a, around a lot during meetings, during kind of when we're working with carriers, when we're working with shippers, when we're working with everyone, it's like, hey, we'll set up an EDI or an API exchange. Yeah. Uh, it's fascinating because like reading about it. It said by 2020, Gartner's estimating that API will perform about 25% of all B2B communications. However, I was reading another report that said nearly one third of businesses in North America are unaware of EDI. So it, it, it was interesting kind of reading about all that type of stuff because when you get into the, the weeds and when you kind of Google like what is API, what's EDI, you kind of run into the same sort of sentences, the same sort of like information out there. Yeah, it's sure. widely used. Um, it's standardized and it's B2B communication. But why I brought you on, Steve, and what I want to talk about, sort of what's the real world experience? Because you can read, you can Google, you can do all that stuff. Sure. And it gets thrown around a lot. But I want to hear kind of from you and what we're experiencing as kind of consultants kind of working with shippers and carriers. What right. is the challenges when it comes to EDI and API? Sure. I, I think maybe before we even talk about challenges, it might be good to kind of understand why you're hearing a lot about EDI and API, right? Like yeah. the types of things that that we're doing, how we're using uh, EDI and API technology, um, where those data flows are going. So um, especially in, in our freight management business, um, where we're representing shippers, um, we're running kind of a fully managed transportation program on their behalf. So we're uh, working with their warehouses, um, we're getting order information from them, um, you know, we're working with their carriers before they pick up freight, after they pick up freight, trying to, you know, really, uh, for us, it's it's a really a tool for automation um, and for, for data exchange, right? Uh, I think you, right. electronic data exchange, EDI, uh, a lot of electronic data interface, EDI. Um, right. Um, you know, I, I think that's really what we're looking to do is is really quickly um, share the right information, share it in the right way so that uh, all of the people on our end uh, understand what they have to do. All of the, the shippers understand where their freight is and, and really everyone feels uh, good and secure about, uh, you know, how, how things are going. And they need it because of just the the pace of information, how fast everything's kind of coming. Right. Yeah, I mean, sure. in theory, all this is is a communication system. Sure. It's mail it's a fax it's an email absolutely but it, this is just the faster version of it well yeah. api is the yeah. faster version of yeah it, right absolutely yeah right. api is is more uh in a in a real time um it's more of a real-time connection so you know uh, especially in kind of uh tech circles and supply chain and some of the shippers you start hearing terms like the amazonification so right, right. people want to know um where their goods are at the moment, um, you know, at this very moment. Right, so, right. It, you know, if you think about the way that EDI works is it's really, it's pulling a lot of information and it's it's batch sending that information. So that can be incredibly powerful. I mean, if you think about, uh, we have a client that does about 125,000 shipments a year, right? Mm -hmm. And on each of those shipments, there's a number of different uh, products. There's, there's all this information. So if you think about the sheer volume of information that is being exchanged between us and, and this client, it's huge, right? So, right. Um, 
that's really where something like an EDI connection is super powerful because it's 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 a really automated, secure, structured way to get all of that information into our system so that we know what to do with it. And it probably cleans it up, right? In theory, if someone's yeah. like well, thousands of shipments and you got to email over like, hey, we did all this, exactly. it's easy to have a fat finger fudge up the numbers. Right. EDI sort of is helping you and API is helping you take that issue out of there, take away the human error? Yeah. So I, I, the idea is that it's pulling from really a clean system on the shipper side. So if it's not and we're seeing errors, you know, we're able to give that feedback to people and say, hey, you know, those errors, those those orders that you sent over are erroring out because maybe this location code has changed or right. uh, this is a, a, a new location that's coming over in the wrong format, something, you know, something to that effect. So it, it, it it does. It's a standardization process as well, which helps. You know, anytime that we can standard anything, standardize anything in, in operations, it's a huge benefit. You know, to us and to the clients. Right, because it'll help build on the whole data exchange and all that type of yeah. stuff. So you can yeah. actually have big data look at the stuff. But right, I mean, it's the real world. Like, how does the standardization work? Because oh, at yeah. the end of the day, it's yeah. humans inputting this information. Sure. Uh, you know, I think the great lie of, of EDI and, and API, um, it, not necessarily from a technical perspective, that's that's not really what I'm talking about. But, you know, every time that, that and I'm sure as you were doing your research, you see the word standards over and over right, and right, over right. again when it comes to both EDI and API. And I think, you know, when you start really participating in those markets, what you realize is that's kind of the great lie of, of EDI and API is that, you know, there you would think when, when folks are talking so often about standards that it really would be, you know, standardized in right. the way that uh, information is exchanged. And, and, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, really, it, especially when you're working with with carriers, um, mm -hmm. you really have to be kind of uh, uh, blunt and, and very uh, prescriptive about what what you want, what types of information you want, um, because that's the only way that you're going to figure out if they can actually share that information. So I think what we've found is, is you know, kind of broadly across using a wide carrier base, um, there isn't necessarily in standardization in, in terms of the types of information uh, that would be shared in, say, an EDI 204 code or the format that it's shared in. So, you know, I think a, a big kind of talking point for these uh, technologies is standardization. But when you look at, at kind of taking that into a real world format, you know, you really kind of have to dive in because carrier A is not going to give you the same level of carry information as carrier B. And when you're uh, when you're working in those markets and working with, you know, for us working with our clients, you know, that's information that they they hold us to having that we need to have. Right. right. Um, so you really need to kind of dive into it on a on a carrier by carrier basis and by a, a client by client basis. So how do you do that? How do you dive into this? Like you, you roll up your sleeves and you ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> That's really, uh, you know, I, I think you have like having, an example or anything like. Yeah, what, sure, yeah. sure. Um, you know, I, I think one example is we have uh, a client that has um, a big drop trailer program for for their LTL shipments. So mm -hmm. they work with a lot of grocery warehouses, um, and uh, what they like to do is is they like the carriers like to to drop the equipment. So they'll come in the yard, the products will be signed for, um, and they'll they'll actually physically drop the trailer. Hopefully they'll pick another one up and and off they go. Right, but right. Um, you know, from from our perspective uh, and from the client's perspective, that's actually delivered freight. And so, for one carrier, uh, a drop trailer might trigger a uh, might trigger a notice for them to to send us as delivered. Which, from 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 our perspective, it's been received. The title's been transferred. It's it's uh, you know it's a delivered good. But you know, another carrier that we work with, they don't necessarily have that same opinion. So they won't they won't send us that delivered message. They're going to wait until they get. Uh, you know, physical backup, physical proof from from the location before they're sent that it's delivered. So there's there's a lag in that, right? Right. And so as people are thinking about kind of looking at real time data and the Amazonification, I think in order to get that experience, you need to be really kind of upfront um, right, about what you're looking for from your carriers so that yeah. they can support you in that way. Like, how do you even find that out? How do you have that? That when do you have that? Like. Oh sure. wait, where you're not thinking of it the same way I'm thinking of it. Sure, um, you know, for us, we try to do as much work um, as possible at the negotiation level. So, you know, uh, I think in order to be successful, kind of downstream of the negotiation, all of that needs to be laid out in in the RFP. It needs to be talked about when you're 
Um, communicating with carriers, you know, we like to do uh, phone screens with carriers before we'll send out the RFP. Just give them really an overview of, of what's going on. So here's here's the client, here's the profile, here's why we think um, this freight is, is good for you, Carrier X. Yeah. And uh, here are the, by submitting a bid, here are kind of the requirements, here are the expectations, here's the service standard that you're going to be held to. Um, so, uh, you know, I think as much as possible, you try to figure that out on the front end. Um, and then it's like anything else, it's trial by error. So you'll implement a program and, and you'll find out something isn't exactly the way that, that you thought it was. And then you have to react. How do you do this in the spot market? Sure. Um, <laughs> there, uh, it, I feel like it's going to be sort of chaos because you're not, yeah. you don't have that conversation. You just, I got this, I need it here. Who's going to give me the quote? Like, let's sure. go. Like, sure. how do you have, like, what do you do in a spot market scenario? Um, in, in terms of what, in terms of using API? Yeah, API? yeah. Having those, well, just like that type of thing, like you're saying, like, here's what it is. Here's everything I need. Like, sure. is that just what goes out or am I like just not understanding? We don't actually do a lot in the spot market. <laughs> the ADI API. Yeah. So it just, that doesn't even exist in there. I mean, you, you could have it exist. You certainly could. Right. Um, I, I think from a carrier perspective, uh, what they like, so so another thing about EDI is it's it's a pretty costly technology. It's costly okay. to implement. It's costly to maintain. It breaks a fair amount, um, which is one of the advantages when you're when you're kind of thinking about trade offs between EDI and API. Is is traditionally EDI is a more expensive. Um, the the calls are more expensive. It's it's, right, it's right. a more expensive um, yeah, type that, of technology. That's one of the big components is just having yeah, support. Absolutely, absolutely. With that So I thing. think you know. Unless, uh, from from our perspective, um, what we would try to what we try to do is is kind of limit the pool of spot carriers and okay. really try to in the same way that that we we partner with negotiated uh, carriers for contracts and align on expectations. You know, you try to do as, as much of that work as possible in the smart market too. So limit the field, uh, have trusted partners, uh, outline expectations. Right. Uh, you know, it, and sometimes you're able to connect with them, um, you know, digitally, whether it's an EDI or API connection, and some, sometimes you're not, and there's manual kind of workarounds. But I think, um, you know, one of the pushbacks that you're going to get in this market from carriers, if you're not using them on a daily basis and they don't have enough volume is, I'm not going to make an EDI or an API uh, connection with you. It's it's way too expensive. That's going to cost me thousands of dollars and my return and my profit on this. It's just, it's never going to add up for me to make that investment. And a carrier saying that, yeah, yeah, but how how are they going to be able to do that? I mean, it just seems that the the world we live in, the pace and the speed of communication, sure. just has changed. Like, sure. to where an email doesn't work. How how can they get away with that? Sure, I mean, there's in terms of um, you know TMS systems, transportation management systems. Like for instance, in in our TMS, the Advantage TMS system, um, you can actually do a fair amount of work through emails, um, through through emails through. Um, kind of user login. So we'll give all of our carriers logins where they can see exactly what freight they're handling, what freight they're bidding on. Um, and, uh, you know, as they pick that up and it kind of moves again through that order fulfillment cycle, we require them to go into that URL and manually put in, hey, you know, picked up, uh, right. you know, status updates in terms of, of where that thing, uh, where that shipment is, right? Where that, right, right? where that freight, where those goods actually are and, and um, providing kind of updates. So it's a, it's a manual process, but, you know, it's, uh, it, again, from a customer experience perspective, from the shipper community perspective, those folks really want um, they really want to understand where their freight's are, where their freight is. Right, visibility right. is a is a huge huge opportunity, um, you know, in in transportation. Um, and so, when you can't do an EDI connection, when you can't do an API connection, uh, you you kind of have to work and, and figure out what the next best possible way to get that level of visibility is. All right, so I guess let's transition. It's because we're kind of there, but into the strategy, what kind of shippers should be thinking about how they can go about doing this. Uh, and it sounds like it's, unfortunately, as much as the on online and when you're reading and researching about this, where it's like everyone uses this, yeah. it's not really the case. You kind of have to have a one-to-one -one strategy. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, for us in terms of strategy, uh, really it comes down to 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 visibility, right? That's, right. A, again, we just talked about it, something that the, the shipper community really, really wants. And I think that demand for visibility is is only going to increase, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when I, when I, we do a lot of interviewing around here and when, when I interview, uh, folks and we start talking about TMS and what is, you know, what is that? And, and, um, you know, cause 
the the average person really isn't familiar with that technology, right? No, it's no. it's it's not um, something that's widely known about. So, um, what I like to compare it to is is just kind of that online shopping experience that a lot of a lot of folks will have, where you buy something online, you'll get a tracking number in your email, and then you'll click on that tracking number, and it'll show you exactly where that freight is, right? You open those things, and FedEx will show you 175 different steps that this one shipment right, right. <laughs> had to go to to get from Groveport, uh, you know, to Boston, Mass, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I, I think, uh, in terms of, oh boy, nope, uh, <laughs> um, what were we saying? Well, I said in terms of, uh, the strategy and how to do it, like in terms of setting up the yeah. strategy with them, because yeah, I mean, most people want the visibility. It's that personal thing. You're kind of watching your little, you're like, oh, that's my thing coming to me. And yeah. Even though it has 20 different steps, you don't think of it as in a big semi with a bunch of other personal right, things. Right, it's right. one of those. The visibility, yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, it's pretty robust. And so something like a TMS is able to, uh, you know, do that on an enterprise level, on a business level where, and then a whole lot more, right? Um, but I think to go back to your question about strategy, it really goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning. I mean, our goal is is to create repeatable processes. Our goals are to give our shippers a, a great experience right. and to to really um, give that visibility so they understand. If their boss calls them and says, you know, hey, where's that forty thousand pounds of uh, you know super important good material, whatever it is that we need, we're able to say that's exactly where it is, right? right. So um, I, I think, you know, in order to do that, you really have to understand uh, specifically on the carrier side, what their capabilities are and what you're going to do. So are you gonna, are you gonna um, potentially track an ELD box so that you can see that truck going down the road, right? Mm -hmm. Or is, is an EDI batch update when something's picked up, is, is that enough? Um, so what what is the customer really looking for? What's, you know, the best, most repeatable process um, that that we can, uh, you know, figure out. Because the, the big thing that we want is is consistency, right? We want, right. if we're going to get this level of service, we want it, we want it every single time right, so right. that, you know, we know what to expect, the customer knows what to expect, um, it, it, and everyone's really uh, holding up their end of the bargain, right? Yeah. I think it goes back to kind of what you, the big thing, right? It may say that it's standardized out in the world. But at the end of the day, it's all human. So you can't yeah, totally. just assume that an API totally. connection is going to work the totally. exact same. You know, and, and management and IT departments at different carriers have different perspectives on what different things mean, right? Right. And so um, I think really you start, to, you, you just have to have those conversations with your partners and, and really figure out, you know, what are their goals? Why do they think that way? Right. Uh, is it valid? <laughs> you know, should we push back? Um, it, because, you know, you mentioned it, e e API is really kind of taken off in the last two, three years here in, in transportation and it's growing, you know, at a rapid rate, right? We're yeah. seeing a lot of investment money. We're seeing new companies sprout out that are, are kind of offering this, uh, uh, this this real time visibility, which you know is primarily driven off of an API call somewhere, right? Right, right, right. Um, So uh, you know this is new for for a lot of companies and a lot of departments, and and so uh, you know I think it's a good time to be kind of engaging with these folks and giving mm -hmm. giving the perspectives of the shippers, right? We have a perspective, our clients have a perspective, the carriers have a perspective. So right. you know it's really trying to understand what everyone's goals are and, and align on that and understand the different carriers' perspectives and capabilities and, and where they're going to potentially build and where they're not. You know, we have, right, right. We have ongoing um, requests uh, and build outs with a number of carriers. And, and so that's something that we're managing, uh, you know, internally here is, you know, we want, uh, you know, just to kind of quickly go back to kind of that drop trailer program, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there's, there are carriers that we use that don't currently offer that service, but it's on their roadmap. It's something that they're going to, they're going to offer in the next, you know, six, nine months is what we hear. So, you know, I, I think, uh, again, kind of understanding what our clients want, um, understanding what we think the best practices and then advocating, mm -hmm. uh, for that with, with the carriers is, is an important part of the job. And that's really part of the strategy. Right, right. No, it's, it's fascinating. It's it's like with any technology you bring on to like a business, you think of it as this like going to be plug and play, but yeah. don't just basically, <laughs> yeah, if, exactly. if we have one message for shippers or anyone listening to yeah, this, it's exactly. that 
API, while it is a great communication system, while it's fast, works in nanoseconds, in yeah. EDI, it's still old and secure. Sure, totally. It still isn't something that's plug and play. It's going to take Absolutely. some work. It takes upfront, but it truly takes understanding yeah. what you're getting from someone. Well, I think that that's exactly right. And I think you brought up kind of a key point, too, is is the upfront setup. Um you know, we've gone through EDI uh, implementations and, and sometimes those take three, four months and, and you sit there scratching your head at the end of the night trying to figure out. You it's know, standardized. Right, Why would this take right, three right. months? Like it's just are, take the standard and go. How are we possibly in this situation again? Right. right, like right how right. is this happening? Why is this happening? Um, you know, and one of the great benefits of, of API is that. You know, in order to set that up, um, in a lot of cases, it's it's getting account information and plugging it in <laughs> to a system, and and then it kind of it's set up. As long as uh, on the, you know, again, we're kind of focusing this conversation on carriers. So as long as the pricing and the account information is loaded um, on the carrier's end, and we're able to to call, um, you know do that web service call mm -hmm. and it's loaded and it's there for us it's just putting in a key and going and grabbing that information so you're taking these these extremely long long implementation cycles where people are spending thousands of dollars and and you know hours of man time and sometimes months and months to to actually get to the end goal right you know we're able to take that uh, you know, wait a day for the carrier to upload the stuff into their system, which they have to do anyway, right? right. And then we put the key in and, and we're off and ready to go. So you're taking that cycle and cutting it down substantially. So, I mean, that's for us, um, there's a ton of value in that and, and for our clients as well, because oh, yeah. just the, the rate at which you're able to onboard, the rate at which uh, you're able to move um, it's it's not only from a uh, from a from a real time visibility when you're on a truck, but it's also that front end, right? Really right, kind right. of shortening those cycles and and getting you to your end state as soon as possible. Um, so there's there's a lot of value in that. There really is. Yeah, but at the end of the day, still you got to be aware of what what it is. Right? Yeah. You can't just because yeah. if all of a sudden you get all this stuff, but you're still getting back this. The drop pro drop trailer Absolutely. program. It's you're gonna have those issues. Yeah, you can set it up as as you know, in an instant, but right, if it's right. not the information that, uh, you know, that we want, that the shipper wants, then it, it really doesn't do anyone yeah. any good. Right? Garbage in, garbage, garbage out. In, garbage out. There you go. <laughs> awesome. All right. Let's wrap it up. Uh, how can people get in touch with you? And sure. Um, the website, uh, Kyle, you do a great job on the website. <laughs> always, uh, <laughs> you know, abornandco.com. Um, or you can always reach out to me, uh, sraborn at abornandco.com. So awesome, Steve. Thanks yeah, for uh, joining me. Yeah, absolutely. It's always fun. Thanks for watching Consulting Logistics presented by Aborn and Company. As always, like and subscribe and share this with a friend. If you're interested in watching this premiere live on YouTube, we do it every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So subscribe, hit that notification button and join me as I'll be in there talking all things freight. Thanks. Peace.